In this top left-hand panel, the workers may look like strange insects to us, but they would have been unsettling to visitors in the 1930s. These masked men are making gas for bombs. Rivera scholar Linda Downs. You see the workers who are wearing gas masks creating the poisonous gases that are then put into the bomb that you see above their heads. Below this panel are the cells that are being attacked by the poisonous gases, and they're being asphyxiated. They are beginning to diminish and collapse in on themselves. This panel would have been as horrible to see as a mushroom cloud showing a nuclear explosion or the Twin Towers being attacked. Wayne State Professor Jerry Heron. It would have resonated very powerfully with people in 1933 because many of them would have experienced as First World War soldiers the terrible incursion of chemical weapons on the battlefield. Men would have come back from that war forever maimed. Some of them wouldn't come back from the war at all as a result of the gas. And what Rivera is doing here is contrasting the use of chemistry with the vaccination panel that you see on the right-hand side. He's showing the destructive use of chemistry and biology, and then on the right-hand side, the constructive use of it in vaccinating a child. So with this opposition, the poison gas panel and the vaccination panel, I see something fundamental to his understanding of this industrial modern world that the machine simply makes things. It doesn't make good things, it doesn't make bad things, it makes things. People guide production into their own particular choices. They can guide production into the production of poison gas, or they can guide industrial and modern scientific production into the creation of vaccines that are life-saving. <laughs> 